Now back to New England Nation. Welcome back to the show. Time now for our roundtable. We touched on it a bit earlier. Uh, the possibility of a letdown game coming off the high of beating the Chiefs. Do the Pats come out flat on this one? No. I, I don't think there's any signs pointing towards that. I think they're riding this three-game win streak. They've gotten so much better since that game in Detroit, which was horrendous. Um, but that was their last road game. They know how important getting a road win is. Mm -hmm. I don't see any signs of them being flat. No, but it's like the old, uh, you know, uh, dirt farmer dangling a carrot in front of a donkey. Hey, road win, road win. We don't have one. Let's go right. get one. You know, Hoodsworth is always right. looking for ways to motivate a group who, you know, let's face it, a lot of those guys have heard a lot of the stuff that he's rolled out over the years. So I think getting that first road win is important. It's a benchmark Belichick can use to keep him focused. Yeah, the Pats are too well coached to have let down losses usually their losses I feel like kind of come out of nowhere like we didn't expect the Lions loss right. it was just right. Right. something that happened right. all right uh, Maury touched on Sony Michelle um, probably I don't know the best runner since Corey Dillon uh, True I, can, runner? I can buy that no I think because he's a real number one back and that's what everybody I think Yanni is looking for now is they want a guy who can block it who can catch it but who can run between the tackles and you put James White in there and then you sprinkle him in a little bit and he's slippery and then you get Sony Michelle really gets good pad level when he finishes runs I think Michelle's really good people uh, for those who went oh two weeks he stinks they're just morons they don't know what they're talking I'll about I'll do respect Back to LeGarrette Blunt and I don't know who else, Shane Vereen. Who have the Pats running backs been of, of well, recent vintage? Well, I mean, vintage? like, like Stephen Ridley Steven is Ridley, another guy. Ben Jarvis, much. Green Ellis, right. But you Ruthie can Ted think, with Michelle and White. Yeah, do you think still thin there? Do you if think, someone gets knocked up? Right, and they put Kenyon Barner in for a little bit, and he was effective. I mean, he just throw him in for a couple he, he plays. Throw him in for a couple plays. I, I don't think it's anything to be concerned about. But I do wonder: is James White a little salty? No, he I wouldn't say so. He's still being the pass catching back, so yeah. I think he's fine. Okay. And I think he's also going to get his touches, but let's remember, he also got for what for him would be paid. Right. So I think he's going to – all he has to do is realize guys are going to get hurt and there will be a couple of games where he'll get 20 carries. All right, we keep talking about Khalil Mack, but we will again right now. Is he as good as everyone's saying? Obviously, Bill Belichick respects him, but don't put him in the LT class. He's the best defensive player in the national J like football Like J.J. Watt of a couple years ago? Uh, he's he's different than J.J. Watt in there. He doesn't put his hand down on the ground, and so therefore he plays the run a little differently. But for my money, and I tweeted this out when Mack was rumored to be traded from the Raiders, if there was one guy the Patriots should have sold out for, it would be him. He's an impact pass rusher. He's a guy off the edge that you can loop around and bring him in the middle. He finds ways to get to the quarterback. I think when Khalil Mack is right, he's his, he's the best in the NFL. The thing is, I don't think he's right today. And a good teammate by, by all accounts. Ruthie, number one seed back in play for the Pats with the win over the Chiefs? Yes, absolutely. I is think it going to go through Foxborough? Best. Yeah, uh, yes. Think, yes. The one seed. All right. No, I'm Here. with Ruthie on this yeah. too. Look, everybody can talk about it. The, the Jags have slid backwards. The Chiefs, I think, maybe they're not a house of cards, but you know how to beat them, and they haven't suffered the big injuries yet. I think for the Patriots, it's just stay the course. These things normally tend to end up going their way. They have the head-to-head -head against Kansas City. They beat Pittsburgh later in the year. I don't think there's a real path blocking them to the number one seed. All right. They have the matchups against the NFC North this year. They already lost to Detroit. Chicago is this weekend. Then they play home against Green Bay and Minnesota. That's a pretty good division. How do you think they fare in the four games? I think the, the Patriots will be fine. I think the Lions situation was a fluky game um, that they probably shouldn't want, shouldn't have lost, and they wouldn't lose again if they played right now. Um, but I'm not worried about the Bears. I'm not worried about Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers. Um, and I'm not worried about the Vikings. Two weeks from today, Aaron Rodgers makes his only appearance against Tom Brady at Gillette That's Stadium because he was hurt eight years ago. Well, the Packers can't there. stop the Caracas All-Stars, so they'll be fine. <laughs> hey, little Chip and Paige, we got a good crew there. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, still to come on New England Nation, our social